Okay, let's talk about creating and working with views in MySQL. Now, let me start by defining what this is a little bit. First off, you'll notice here that the table or that the world database doesn't have any views in it. We have tables in it, but we don't have any views in it. So, views don't store data. Uh, tables store data, but views give us like a window to our data. So, let me show you a little bit of what we're talking about here. Let's say we have our country database here. And let's say the or our world database, and let's say I need to give somebody access to the uh, world information for Africa. Now I may not need them to know everything, but you know they don't need to know about the rest of it, but they need to know about Africa. So what I can do is I can give them access to data for Africa by giving them access to a view rather than through the table. Now, the data is still stored in the table, not in the view, but the view gives us a window to that data. Now, let me show you how we could do this. I'm going to come back over here, and I'm going to start by creating a query. So, I want to create a query that's going to be the foundation of my view. So, I'm going to select, and then I'm going to choose the things I want them to see. So, I want them to see the code, the name, the continent, the region, the surface area, basically everything except, let's say they don't need to know the uh, two-digit code, they don't need to know the local name, and they don't need to know the old GDP. So I would start putting in the rest of my information. So I want to select the code. I want to select the name. Come back over and see what else I've got. Continent, region, surface area. Region, surface area. Let me see what else I need here. Um, we'll skip the independence here. They don't need to know that. They're going to need the population, the life expectancy. The GNP, the GNP old. Uh, we don't need to know them, them to know the local name, but we don't do want them to know the government form, the head of state, and the capital. Remote form, head of state, and capital. So that's all the information I want them to have from country. Now, before I filter this out, I just want to make sure that it's actually working. Make sure I didn't typo anything there. And it is, so it's working fine. Where continent equals Africa. And that filters it down to Africa. Okay, so now that I have my data selected, I want to turn this into a view. And views always start with the select statement. So this is going to be really easy. Now that I've got everything selected exactly the way I want it, I want to create view. And I'm going to call this view African Countries as, and then open parentheses, and then comes my select, and then close parentheses, and then semicolon to end it. And now instead of giving me the data, it will create a view that contains all of that data. So I'm going to execute, and it said down here, create view African countries as blah, 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 blah. Zero rows affected, but the check says, hey, that looks good. So now that I have that view, I can actually query against that view just like I would against a table. So I'm going to do select asterisk from African countries and execute. And there's all of my data. And so now I can start working with that data just like I normally would. So that's a great way of giving me quick access to the data, but giving me access to a window on the data. So. Now, if I wanted to give somebody permissions to access African countries, then they could pull this data, but they'd only see the data that I wanted them to see. They wouldn't see things from other parts of the world because I haven't given them access to the full table. I've given them access to the view. Okay, that's a quick way to create a view. And this was a single table view. Now, let's say that I wanted to create another one that would give me 
Let's go back to our ER diagram here. I'm going to create a series of views for the people who are working at our Africa desk. And I want to give them the uh, governmental form. So I want to give them the country, the, cap uh, the capital, the district that they're in, uh, that the capital is in, and then the government form and the head of state. Again, only for Africa. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start by selecting my information. So I want to select co.code. I'm going to do two tables here, and I'm going to alias one as CO and the other as CI. Let me do that capital so it's going to look better. CO.name as country. Uh, CI.name, that's going to be my city, as capital. Uh, district, and I don't need to specify ci.district because that's only going to show up in one of the tables. Um, I want government form and head of state from country co and city ci, move that out of my way. Where co dot capital equals ci dot id. So what I'm connecting is the capital with this right here, which is where we have a relationship. So that should give me the name and the district of the capital city and continent equals Africa. And let's execute. Now remember, I'm starting out with a select query. I'm going to make sure that everything works the way that I want. So I've got all of my African countries. So the code, the country, the capital, the district, the government form, the head of state. Perfect. And now that I've got this, I am going to create view African. Actually, let's do African governments as and then open parentheses close parentheses at the end of our select query and execute okay so now we have another african governments another view that we can give people who are working with the african countries access to and there's all of our information now, the difference is the first view that we created was just based on a single table. And so it gave us basically a view, a filter view of this. Now, the one we just did created a, uh, was based on two tables. So we get some information from here and some information from here. Now, here's the great thing about the views. Anybody who's working with this data has no idea that it's coming from multiple tables. They're querying the views, so to them, they only see this. They think this is a full table. Now, from a database developer's viewpoint, that's great. It allows us to filter their access to the data, so it allows us to add some security. It allows us to focus them on what they need, and not on all the miscellaneous stuff they don't need. It also kind of hides in the background a little bit, it hides some of the details of the database that they don't need and is frankly going to be a little bit confusing. It's going to be much easier to say if you want to know the capital of the Congo, then you're going to say select a a asterisk from African governments where country equals Congo. There we go. And it'll be much easier than saying, hey, you need to do a join with a couple of different tables in order to get the data that you want. The view simplifies people's access to the uh, data. Now, something else to keep in mind, because the views don't store data, they create a window to the data. If something updates in the data tables, it will immediately be reflected in the views. So it's not like we have to wait for things to propagate from the table to the view. Remember, the view is just a window. So I change the capital of the Congo, and 
or their head of state or whatever, and immediately that becomes available the next time they try to query it. There's no lag time. Now, it is possible to update data using views. That can get a little bit sketchy. So here's what you need to be aware of if you want people to update data during using views. Remember, the data isn't stored in the views. The data is stored here in the underlying tables. So if you want people to be able to update, you need to make sure that the views have all the information that needs to be updated and that, um, and that when they update it, if there's fields in the tables that aren't in the views, that they can accept null characters and they're not primary keys or something like that. Even if you do all of those things, you can run into some issues. So let's say, for example, I'm going to come back here. Here's our country, Congo. Uh, it will work better here. Let me select asterisk from, what do we name the other view? I forget. Um, was it from Africa or was it from African countries? Isn't it terrible? I did it just a minute ago, and now I have already lost it. I'm going to refresh this. African, select asterisk from African countries, where country equals Congo. That was going to be name equals Congo. Okay. So now let's say I went to update this, and I went to through the view, and I went to change their continent from Africa to something else. Well, when I did that, this would no longer be part of the view. So it doesn't match the criteria for the view. So basically, the country would disappear from them. Another issue that can this could create, let's say they go to create something using one of these views. They go to create a new country, and they give it a code that doesn't match anything in their view. It, and this is the primary key, remember. So it doesn't match anything in here, but it matches like USA. Well, then they're going to get a reference saying there's already a country or a message saying there's already a record by that name. You can't do that. They're going to look through here and say, no, there's not. And they're not going to understand that. So those are a couple of things you need to be aware of when you are updating table th uh, data through a view. But you can update the data just fine. Just be aware of some of those caveats and make sure that you've got what you need. Um, so that's working with views. Now, at any point, if you decide you are done with a view for whatever reason, you decide we're just done with the view, we don't need it anymore, you can drop the view. And the command is just drop view and then the name of the views. I'm going to do African countries, and then I'm going to go ahead and end that with a semicolon. Then I'm going to do another one. Drop view African governments. And when I execute the query, those two views are immediately dropped, and they exist no longer. Okay, so that gives you an idea of how we can create a view how we can query the view. And by the way, I just did a couple of real quick queries against them. You can query a view just like you would query any other table. Um, the other thing to be aware of is when you build your query. Now, we did a single uh, table view and a view based on a couple of tables. You can, anything you do in a query, you can incorporate into a view. So you can do math, you can do statistics, you can do whatever you want to. If you can do it in a query, then that can become part of a view. And then anytime somebody does a query against the view, then it runs that underlying query against the tables as well to make sure they're querying the right information. Okay, there we go. Hopefully that helps you um, use views in your databases.